Well, not five minutes after finishing our Dremel project, we got our first use for it. Got a call from the neighbor about his tractor. That guy right there. Uh, turn the key on, sparks come flying out of the battery, um, the starter clunks, and then nothing. You turn it on again and again, and, and nothing happens. So uh, we're going to do some basic electrical troubleshooting on this guy. I've got my mobile workbench here loaded up on the old Honda headed over to the neighbor's property and we're going to take a look at what's wrong with this tractor. The old John Deere 265. This tractor, ladies and gentlemen, has been through hell. Mower deck has been ripped off a long time ago. It's been on more off-road trails than pretty much any Jeep Wrangler you'll see on the highway. Under the hood. Ugh. The venerable Kawasaki 540cc single cylinder engine. Unkillable. Well, or so I thought. Here is the root of the problem. The battery, for the longest time, had no tie down. So every time you go over a bump, it came flying off, ripping off all the wires from the ignition switch. Uh, had it fixed with a zip tie, but I guess you make it stronger and they find a new way to break it. So here's the ignition switch. We got wires coming off all over the place. They're not labeled. The whole tractor's been re rewired at some point in its 30 year lifespan, so no schematic is gonna help us. Nor do I have a schematic for the switch. So we're gonna go over uh, how to basically figure out what each wire on a switch does with no help from a schematic. First things first, I've got the negative battery terminal disconnected. Uh, we don't want this hitting and arcing because there's loose wires all over the place. As you can see from the weld marks, it's already touched a couple times. So let's go tuck that down there. One nut on the switch here. And out comes the switch. Last time I rewired this, I put some tape on it, um, but the tape's rotting away, the Sharpie's worn off, so we're gonna pretty much start from scratch here. All right, we're back to the mobile workbench. Uh, any switch like this is going to have three positions. It's going to have off, on, and start. In the off position, uh, you should have continuity between the ground pin and the pin that goes to the, uh, well, it could be a magneto, it could be the spark plug wire, whatever it is, it's going to be something that will ground the spark in the off position. That keeps the engine from running, and it will also kill it if it already is running. In the on position, you should have power coming from the battery to the ignition. That will power uh, things like the gauge lights, the headlights, um, any accessories you have. And then in the start position, you'll have continuity between the battery positive and the wire going to the starter solenoid. So that's what we need, uh, and that's what we're gonna go one by one and figure this out. It's just gonna be like a game of Clue. Oh, I've got my leads hooked up to my meter. We're gonna do a bunch of continuity checks. One of the pins is brass, that's almost always the ground, so we're gonna put one on there. Now since the switch is in the off position, we're looking for the pin that has continuity with this. That will be our magneto wire, that's the first one we can rule out. So we got nothing, nothing, nothing. We have continuity there. So this guy here is our magneto wire, we can check that one off. Let's turn the switch into the on position. One click. Uh, we need to find the battery positive. I already know from previous experience, this guy is the battery positive. That's one of the few wires that wasn't ripped off. So we'll put one lead there. Now we're looking for the terminal that has continuity with battery positive. It's not gonna be the magneto. It's not that one. Hopefully it's not ground. Okay, so this actually has two. Um, most likely um, they're redundant. One is for the gauge lights and the accessories. This one is specifically for lighting. Um, these switches are all a little bit different, um, but some of them have a separate pin for lights than they do from the regular ignition power. I don't know why, but uh, this tractor has lights, so we'll just do it as it's supposed to be done. So we've got our magneto kill wire, we've got our switched ignition, and we've got our uh, light wire. Um, the last thing we need to do is find the wire that goes to the starter solenoid. Whatever wire it is, we'll have continuity with the battery positive when the switch is turned into the momentary start position. So, I know it's not ground, I know it's not lights, oh, that's because ignition's on, I know it's not lights or switch power, I know it's not the magneto, that's the only one left. My theory is correct, we should have off, on, and start. 
And that's all it is. So through process of elimination, we've got each one um, labeled. Now, I, uh, I've been a little bit disingenuous with you folks. I've actually already done this. And I've used my little Dremel to grind in what each one is because I tried Sharpie and I kept wear wearing off. So uh, it's just something that's going to make life easier for the next schmuck who's got to work on this thing because most likely that next schmuck is going to be me. Since this tractor leads such a hard and rough life, um, I don't think I'm going to go back to these. They tend to slip right off. Um, we're going to do a reliability mod. What I'm going to do is cut the wires and hard solder them right to the switch. That way they don't come off again. Now, just so it's serviceable, we're going to get a six pin Molex connector and solder that in as well. That way the switch can come out if it's needed, but it's going to be a much stronger locked connection um, as opposed to these guys, which come right off every time you hit a bump. These are the connectors I'm going to be using. They're called Molex connectors. It's a trade name, but they're super common. What you have is two little locking pins. You push them through the hole in the connector and uh, they lock in. So they make a very strong fit. You hear the nice little satisfying click and it will not come out. Um, the other nice thing about them is despite being so strong, they're also super easy to pull pins and remove them out. You just need one of these cheap little tools. It's a Molex pin removal tool. You just slip it over there, push the pin in, and out comes the, out comes the wire. So if you ever need to move something around or replace one, it's super easy. The connectors are cheap, as are the pins. However, uh, in my line of work, I wind up with a lot of scrap wiring harnesses with pins on them. So I'm just going to reuse one. I've cut the wires off. I'm just going to strip the insulation off and solder directly onto it. It's kind of a uh, redneck way to do it. The right thing to do would be to buy brand new ones that you would just stick the wire into and crimp on. But uh, I'm not uncrimping these. Um, that's too much work. And uh, since Radio Shack closed, you can't buy these in a store and we need this fixed today. We'll begin by stripping the insulation off of the wires tinning the wires and tinning the switch where we're going to solder it on. Wait for the old 12 volt soldering iron to heat up. And let's start tinning our wires. Soldering to crusty metal is very, very difficult. So the one thing you have to do before you try anything like this is scuff up the metal, get it nice and clean so it'll accept solder. Um, unfortunately, I'm out in the field here and I have no electricity. If only there was some way I could get a Dremel onto this battery and run it remotely. Oh wait, I just made one. So let's go ahead and hook this up. Already paying for itself. We'll move on to tinning the freshly cleaned terminals on the switch. And we'll go ahead and solder the wires onto the switch. I'm gonna put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on each connection, just because this tractor lives outside. All right, I've had to add a little bit more solder to each one to get a good connection. So before we go plug these into the connector, let's put on our heat shrink tubing. Normally this is where I would whip out my heat gun and shrink these all up, but we're out in the field, so we're gonna make do with a regular butane lighter. I'm gonna go down below where there's no wind, give this thing a fighting chance. Had to step inside the barn for a second to get some still air so the lighter would actually work on this. So now that those are all uh, heat shrinked, we're going to go ahead and plug it in. You've got a male and a female. Huh, it's starting to snow on me. Uh, a male and a female 
doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to use the female for the switch and I'll put the male end on the wiring harness. So, let's put him in the small end. And listen for the click. All right, now that our switch is all prepped, let's go over to the wiring harness on the tractor and see if we can find all six of these wires. All right, we're back over at the tractor. All we gotta do is locate our six wires. The first one's real easy because it, from the last time it was rewired, there's still a label on it that says lights positive. So this will be the wire going out to the lights. Uh, there's a bunch of wires in here. I, none of those are labeled. We'll have to find out what those are later. So we've got our lights. Uh, this one's also quite easy. It's the wire going straight to the negative battery terminal. So that's clearly our battery ground. Uh, this red wire, if we follow it here, on this tractor, it uses a ign little ignition module right here. It goes right to that. So that's clearly our kill switch for the ignition. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Uh, we have this black wire, which if we follow it, goes right down to the starter solenoid. So that'll be the uh, wire we hook up to the start terminal on the ignition switch. Um, here's another wire. This goes all the way to the starter and is bolted right up against the battery terminal, which if we follow up goes right to the positive battery terminal. So this is essentially the battery positive battery terminal down here. So this will be our positive battery into the switch. So we've got the uh, kill switch, the start switch, the battery in, battery ground, lights. All that leaves us is the uh, switched ignition power for the uh, dashboard and the PTO and stuff like that. It's gonna be one of these wires in here um, cause these are all female. They're going to go onto the switch since this was rewired a long time ago. I'm assuming most of these don't do anything anymore. Um, it's also missing the deck. So there's other things that are vestigial now. So as I take a closer look at some of these connectors, uh, the insulation is starting to peel back. Um, they're corroded. They're not in good shape. So we're going to cut all these wires off and get to nice clean metal. And we'll come over here and solder in the male wires for our ignition switch. So let's go ahead and fire up the soldering iron one more time. We're going to strip the insulation off these, go over to the tractor, cut and solder them on, plug them into our connector, making sure every wire is going to the right pin, and uh, should be good to go. Alright, we've got all of our connectors snipped off. The wires are nicely tinned with solder. The insulation is stripped off all the pins. Those are also nicely tinned with solder. We'll go ahead and solder them up. As you can see, all of our pins have been soldered onto the wires, uh, with the exception of the uh, switched ignition wire. I'll solder that one on when I figure out what it, what wire it goes to. Um, as you can see, there's a new purple wire. I really wasn't happy with the condition of the wire going to the starter solenoid. It was kind of, uh, I'm sorry, that's the wire going from the battery positive to the switch. Um, it was really corroded and I couldn't get a good solder joint on there, so I just made a new uh, wire in fashionable purple. It's the color of royalty. I'm just going to get my uh, Molex connector and start inserting all the pins into the connector. Um, I'm going to do this off camera just so I can make sure I get every single one right. In our search for the mystery ignition wire, I have learned two things. First of all, the uh, wire that I thought only went to the headlights actually does the lights on the dashboard as well. So the only thing that ignition wire must do that I can think of is the fuel cutoff solenoid right on the bottom of the carburetor here. There it is. The way I'm gonna test it is very scientific. I have a pin sticking out with nothing on it and I'm gonna to touch each wire under here to the pin and see what happens. Um, so I actually already did that and the white wire down there did nothing. The red wire, that's the second thing I learned, that is not the ignition switch. That also did nothing. The black wire here made a big spark right in my face, so that's clearly ground for something that's no longer on this tractor. Uh, and this connector with the purple and purple and black is the one I want. With the key switch in the on position, when I touch that, I can hear the fuel shutoff solenoid clicking. So that's our ignition wire. So that's the last thing I have to do is cut that, solder the pin onto that, attach it to the connector, 
and we should be off to the races. All right, everything's hooked up, plugged in, switch is reinstalled. Moment of truth, ignition on. We have our very dim lights there. It's very faded and it's kind of bright out. Uh, our lights, working good. Let's see if she starts. Again, with the choke off. All right, well, it starts. Needs a little work with the choke, but I would say our problem is fixed. Thanks for watching.